Let's now shift our attention to what is unfolding in the state of Israel, where the people in Israel are out on the streets. They're queuing up again for the fifth time in the last four years for yet another general election. Now, there are four key players here. Benjamin Netanyahu who is trying to make a comeback. And there's also Prime Minister Yad Lapid who is seeking a re-election. But also the current Defence Minister Benny Gantz is eyeing the top job and Itamir bin Gvir, a far-right leader, is targeting his niche base. Now, all eyes, of course, are on Netanyahu. He served as the Prime Minister for longer than anyone else in Israel's history. He's in the middle of many corruption cases, though. But that has not reportedly affected his popularity. Now, Netanyahu is also expected, most certainly at the end of those polls, to emerge as the leader of the single largest party in the Israeli Knesset. It is expected to get about 30 seats, which is a quarter of the total. It's also about to expel leaders who are disloyal to the country. And giving a pretty tough fight to Netanyahu is the current Prime Minister Yad Lapid. His last time's ally, Naftali Bennett, is not in the running this time round. So Lapid is, of course, at a pretty desperate disadvantage. His calculations, of course, hang by a thread. Even a slight drop in the turnout is going to be enough to push him out of the Knesset. Now, Israel, remember, has a parliamentary system that is made up of many parties, none of which have ever managed to single-handedly win a majority in the Knesset. A similar scene is expected to play out this time round, where different parties will have to cobble together a coalition to reach the magic figure of 61 to form the government. It could be Netanyahu or it could be Lapid, but what is cert certain is that both of them or anyone who in fact would want to form a government will need the support of these smaller parties, which of course will become the kingmakers. 61 seats are needed for any leader to, in fact, form a coalition government. It's also another crucial player is Benny Gantz. He is making his debut with a new national party. He is aiming for a strong showing. Netanyahu has already vowed to not partner with Benny Gantz. The religious Zionist party is eyeing for a coalition to sit on the ruling side. And experts say that it could, of course, be the largest extreme right-wing group ever to be seated in Israel's parliament if it manages to get enough number of votes. And also our correspondent from Ranana, Jody Cohen, is in fact standing by with more updates. Jody, this is a very crucial election and a lot of people are predicting that this is an election that could bring back Benjamin Netanyahu to power. But the fact is, he faces a lot of these corruption cases. So how is that likely to play out in his chances of returning to power in Israel? So I think that has already been factored into previous elections where... Um, the electorate knew about the charges against him. His supporters believe that it's a witch hunt. They believe that, for example, trying to get positive media coverage isn't a crime and that many politicians around the world do that. So that's already factored into their voting. And likewise, people who support uh, particularly Yesha Tid, Yair Lapid's party, um, believe that he shouldn't be prime minister and very much um, would hold a light up to those um, charges against him and so would absolutely not vote for him. But it has been sort of built into certainly the polls and in even previous elections. As you said, this is the fifth election in less than four years. What's interesting over the last couple of hours is uh, some developments. So um, at the 12, uh, 12 o'clock local time, the Central Election Committee issued the voter turnout figures at that time. And they are 
surprisingly the highest since 1999, saying that 28.4% of the voters have already voted compared to 25.4% last year at the same time. Another interesting development is Hadash Tal, the far left party that potentially Yair Lapid needs to rely on it in order to um, potentially build a coalition for himself there. And they are saying that by their estimates, only one third of the Arab Israeli community are turning out to vote compared to, you know, the, the general voter turnout. So they have been adopting today Likud's strategy, which is one plus one, which is they're saying every Hadash Tal voter needs to go and get out another Hadash Tal supporter who didn't vote last time in order to get them across the electoral threshold. We're also hearing about some individual cases of irregularities potentially. So, for example, a polling booth secretary in one community reportedly told people how to vote and that person was immediately replaced. The Central Election Committee are looking into five individual other cases. They're investigating those and we will, of course, provide updates as more is known. And President Herzog has really been focusing on getting the message out for people to go and vote and that, yes, this is the fifth election in less than four years. And despite voter fatigue, every vote really does count. And also to remind people that it is, in fact, a great privilege to be able to vote. And there are billions of people around the world who don't have that uh, privilege. Absolutely indeed, Jody. Thank you very much indeed for joining us and getting us all those updates there. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.